five four three two one go and here we are welcome to the week in review i'm your host adam shooty and uh you know this is the state of confusion um yeah great week right okay lots going on and busy week just on the hunt on the hunt for more doctors to work with more opportunities reminding people that you're available reminding people that you're there for them reminding these are your clients reminding the clients that you're there to service them and you're there to provide whatever it is that they need from a su surgery support perspective um yeah you know inroads at several hospitals and you know just trying to stay focused. Today's a big day to get back on that track, back on that focus track. It is Tuesday. The weekend review is supposed to be done on Sunday. Uh, it was Easter and my son hurt his foot. All kinds of stuff's going on. The holiday didn't necessarily interfere with recording. I think it, you know, what ended up happening was I was outside putting up fence posts for our garden and that's probably more interesting than any of the medical device stuff chasing around chasing after doctors trying to get them to love you so that they will give you the business uh, I think the key thing is falling in love with your products right love actually love and stand behind what you have to share and what you have to sell and you're not selling anything you're providing people with opportunities all right that's the golden nugget for the first two minutes and three seconds of this broadcast uh, what else what else what else yeah building a new fence around our garden has been an interesting project if you think of uh the ground here where i live in Connecticut, south, as you could call it, the southwestern Connecticut. I don't know if you'd, you can really call it southwest, but in the lower portion of the state, you know, you want to normally, you want to put, you know, a fence post into the ground, right? And then you put some sort of gravel rocks around it and maybe even cement. Well, the ground here is so rocky when you when you dig into the ground and I used a big automatic auger that you you know gas powered auger that thing would get down maybe a foot there'd be so many rocks it'd be kicking up you know softball sized rocks and you just can't easily dig a four foot hole into the ground I think the depth that you need to go is somewhere around 36 inches you want to get down below the frost line because when let's say the frost freezes down to this level here right see that frost line that's where the squiggly lines are if the frost freezes down to that level then um, if your post isn't below that frost line if your post stopped somewhere here as that as that ice solidifies and as that ground hardens it also kind of expands and it's going to kind of get underneath your post and it's going to push it up because you're basically or you know the dirt underneath it's going like this it's going to push that post up so one solution is to go very deep so that as that expansion and contraction occurs it's just kind of hugging the post but it's actually down deeper another solution which I kind of opted for was rather than trying to get four feet down into the earth, I got maybe two feet down, maybe the frost line, it goes down 18 inches, maybe it goes down 36 inches, I don't know. With the way the climate has apparently changed, it just isn't as cold in the winter as it used to be, you don't get the deeper freeze. We only had one snow here this year. So anyway, the I ended up having to cement it in and the other thing is, is it is, there is so much moisture in the ground here. I'm basically at the floodplain or at the, at the, uh, is it the floodplain? I mean, basically you dig down more than about two feet, you hit water. I'm in almost like a marsh. So my rationale is 
you put any type of wood in there, I don't care if it's cedar, hardwood, whatever, something that's supposed to last. There might be a couple type of rare Amazon woods that you could basically put directly into water and it wouldn't rot for a hundred years, but that's, that's not what we're talking about. If you put any type of lumber that you're gonna buy at a lumber store into the water, even if it's cedar, which can resist rot from water and moisture more so than say, you know, a, a pine or a hardwood, when you put that down into the water and it's gonna sit in water, and maybe even r dry and you know become wet again cyclically and that thing's gonna rot out so you go to all this work put these fence posts in and it rots out so what i ended up doing is i ended up getting these bracket things that they um that are easy to find on uh the old uh internet but basically i got these brackets and they just look like this right and the fence post goes down into that bracket so this bracket gets put into the earth and what you do is you pour some cement. So basically I poured a cement footer, probably, you know, almost two feet deep. And I just look at it like this. I'm creating a big stone. And this big stone, I suppose even big stones in freezing and thawing can move around. So we'll see if this was enough. But I basically put in a big stone. And that big stone uh, hunk of concrete has a bracket that is cemented into it and then that has a fence post on top and i have to say i left a little bit of a gap between the bracket and the cement so that no water would pool underneath there and i'm hoping that that also means that the amount of rust or moisture that would be in contact with the very bottom of the fence post would be the, at a minimum so we're going to minimize the rot of the wood and the rusting of the steel bracket which for all intents and purposes is something that is you know half inch steel gonna rust out in the my lifetime probably not uh but still i wanted to give it its you know best chance of uh, survival in the long term you then screw in just with construction screws into the wood through the bracket and the fence post is held in there uh, so right now I've got 8, 10, 11 posts going around the whole thing. And I've got to put some sort of uh, connecting wood across the top to frame it out. Then staple in some fencing. And we've got ourselves a protected garden for the vegetables. And so that's what we're doing. We are... We're farming and we're going to farm and we're going to have a nice, beautiful garden for the kids to enjoy. I think we do it well enough. Also, the other thing about this is there's what used to be there, which was a vegetable garden that had some marginally raised beds, just some uh, for like two by ten boxes that were built. And that's all fine and good, too. That works. We got a lot of fruits and vegetables out of it. Fruits? Do we do we have any fruits? I don't think so. Vegetables? No, we didn't plant any fruits. So the best fruits you could... I guess you got... We got some watermelons out of it. Got some watermelons. And then there's, you know... You could do strawberries. But for the most part, it's, it's vegetables out of the garden. So... And herbs. The thing is between... There's a, there's a garden where you just plant the stuff so that you can get the stuff out. And then there's a garden where you walk in and it's like a cool garden experience right so that's what this is this is a this is a you go oh look at that gate and maybe you have some ivy growing up over it and with flowers and stuff and you go oh what's in there you know so it's like an experience you can walk in and it's a little bit more contained and a little bit more of an environment so where we had something before it was just like oh you got a garden over there that's cute and the stuff grows and you eat it this is going to be more like you're going to want to go in there and you're going to want to work in there maybe even you could have a little stool or a little you know seating area where you could almost get a moment of quiet contemplation in with the flora and fauna as the bees come and pollinate the flowers and you, you can watch it as everything grows and you can pluck the weeds out and it becomes a harmonizing of yourself with nature and you can even see just how my demeanor has changed now that I realized how 
wonderful and beautiful thing this thing is that we're trying to create and that's that's why i showed up for myself here today to make this video is because that's what i want to understand i want to understand what am i passionate about what is it that this life does to us that makes me sound like the person that was at the beginning of this video eight minutes or so back and the person that I feel like I am now where I feel connected to some sort of purpose or something that I'm trying to accomplish right so I could go back and I could edit it and I could take out that first two to five minutes or whatever it was when I was just ranting and spewing off the kind of boiling off the the stress of the transition between the busyness of life and all the things that need to be done to go to, you know, to do business and do the right things to appease all of the powers that be that need their pound of flesh every day. And then the inner workings of your life where you're able to take time for yourself. And from that place, you're actually able to give to these other people more. So I'm able to now that I've kind of transitioned over to this other state of mind that I've been able, I was able to push through that, that kind of frenetic, you, if you wanted to look into it, you could probably say, what kind of brainwave pattern is that? Is that an alpha or beta brainwave pattern where it's, it's more, and, and then did I now pass into a, a theta or delta brainwave pattern? Probably not likely. I don't think I've, uh, nor does it matter. Who cares? The fact is there are different states of mind that we inhabit throughout the day. And I think that state of mind <clears throat> that I started this conversation off in is the state of distraction, of confusion, of flight or fight, where you're just trying to whack-a-mole everything down in your life to give yourself some sort of peace and space and you just never are going to get there now once you can transition into this more flow state this more focused state you get the space in the clarity almost that laser-like precision to say this is what i want to do next and this is what i'm going to do next and then of course all this stuff is going to flood back in and you're going to get back into that state of craziness and confusion again um this is the next thing i'm going to do today going to get out the old journal and I'm going to do my three pages and I can tell you that life is better when three pages end up in this journal and on the fourth I wrote literally a sentence and a half <laughs> and then nothing happened again until the 10th and then that which was yesterday and I did three pages and I'm going to do another three pages today and come hell or high water or whatever you want to say that's the goal the goal is to start do three pages finish and the other thing is i would recommend this is what i'm going to recommend starting on the right hand side always don't start on the left hand side like i did yesterday because if you start on the right hand side three pages gives you front back front and then you'll have a blank back page that you can use for any notes or to-do list items or things that come up. So it gives you a way to then have a, a log of the things that you talked about or thought about, and then you're able to check back in with those things and you could move them to another notepad or into a digital format, whatever. But you at least have cleared your mind of all these, of all the busyness and the confusion and you've opted for sanity, clarity, and efficiency, precision. I think that's all I got to say to you today. And I hope that there is at least some level of value in me doing this to the people that are viewing this, as well as to myself. I, I know I got a lot out of it and I'm going to take that with me into the day. So namaste. I do acknowledge and respect the spirit and the God that is also in you.